All right. So let's get started, Eric. Thank you very much for, for coming back to our channel. Um, we appreciate that. Um, we know that as a software engineer, you have worked with uh, many different technologies and technology platforms. Uh, we know that you have been advocating agile values and open source uh, software as well. Uh, so our first question will be, uh, what led you to, you to become a green software advocate? I would say that it really is from multiple perspectives. I came at it from different directions. You already mentioned that I'm a software engineer. I've been working in consulting for the last yeah, 20 plus years, I would say. And as a consultant, it was always, and it is always our goal to help organizations become better at what they do. And in my case, of course, in software engineering. So there's this idea to help, to improve, to never stop, to not say this is good enough, never change a running system. It's always the opposite of saying, what have we achieved so far? How can we make this even better? And look at different dimensions of how to make the art, if you will, of software development better. At the same time, I'm a really, I would say, a passionate technologist. I'm generally speaking an optimist. I see a lot of positive use of technology. So that means in the end, what I'm saying is society will use computers. We will use computers and computers are, of course, split. I mean, I'm saying, of course, but I don't see a major change here into the devices we have, like the laptops, the mobile phones, but also a server component. And of course, we know that those devices, especially the servers, are using a lot of electricity. So there was also this idea that to say, I don't want to get rid of using computers. I, I, I do acknowledge that they, in general, bring good. And then we will use a lot of compute power. And how can we make sure that that is a bit more sustainable or a lot more sustainable in some cases? And then what I think also might play a little bit into it, you can hear it when I speak. I'm based in Germany. I grew up in Germany. And was a country, there's a lot of green movement in Germany, also in the wake of the Fukushima disaster. How long ago was that now? I don't know, five years ago or so. As a country, Germany decided to get out of nuclear energy, which means in, in Germany, if you're using electricity, you basically are making a choice. Either you create carbon emissions or you're doing sustainable electricity from renewables. And that means in general, you're trying to reduce the electricity consumption, which again brings you then to thinking about greener electricity. So all of these things really, I guess, set the background and let me approach this. And then what happened, I must say I was not involved in it, but ThoughtWorks, the company I work for, is a founding member or was part of the group of companies who decided to found the Green Software Foundation. I got into this. I learned about the work that we did with Etsy. I think I mentioned that in the webinar that I, that I did in this channel a while ago. I was intrigued by the story. You mentioned I'm a big advocate of open source software. I'm absolutely, and I saw that we developed a piece of open software in that space. I got into it, got interested in it. And then one led to another, and suddenly I found myself being more knowledgeable about it. And then, as a good consultant, I was sharing the knowledge that I have. That's right. That's right. That's, uh, that's yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, I like this this uh, kind of uh, inspiration story that, the, that you told us about uh, being a German and in Germany, like the importance of, you know, like consumption and electricity consumption in this case. Um, uh, I was wondering also over the past year, if you uh, have you come across any, any initiative or project that have uh, made significant stride in promoting uh, conscious software uh, practice? And in one case, I would hope the Green Software Foundation <laughs> Also, um, as a foundation that does a lot of good work, I mean, there's now, of course, the close link with the Linux Foundation that has really helped in many regards. At ThoughtWorks, we do have training platforms and so on. We can consume a lot of those courses. And one of the things that I, I mean, I was really basically preaching to the choir, if you will. But I mean, I made sure that the um, Green Software Foundation training courses are part of the recommended trainings that consultants can do when they're in between client engagements, for example. But as I said, as an initiative, the Green Software Foundation, I think, is helpful and is getting more and more impactful, I would say, if I look at the number of organizations that are joining the Green Software Foundation. But it is also, I would say, really, a lot is happening when you start looking. It is not that in your face, but these things do happen. I mean, I'm collaborating here in, in Hamburg with a university professor. We're trying to find other people She's talking to the students about this and so that there are attempts and I would say especially the generation that is now in the universities has an even more 
urgent urgency, I would say, in addressing this topic. So my hope is that these initiatives, that's a long play, of course, but I mean, to get already people who are studying computer science that right from the beginning, they understand the need to consider the carbon emissions as an architectural characteristic, as something that is part of the software solutions they're building. And uh, what challenges do you foresee in implementing these uh, practices on a broader scale? Like, um, how do you propose uh, overcoming them or how do you feel about it? I mean, the challenge in general is, of course, that especially at the moment with the economic climate, but also in general, there's huge pressure to deliver software quickly. And not only, I mean, partly, of course, to make it cheaper to develop the software, but also because the market is changing, there's a lot of forces. And I always use e-commerce companies as an example because they're easy to understand. An e-commerce company gets value from being able to implement a product idea quickly that they don't have to wait for long. So they want to implement something quickly and adding more characteristics, more architectural characteristics, adding more constraints, of course, in general, slows things down. So that is something that will make it harder. At the same time, and I mentioned that in the in the talk that I gave in the in the webinar, there is this overlap between green cloud, green computing, and green ops with FinOps. Because in a way, and we talked about it just now, right? I mean, reducing the emission means use less compute power, which means you're spending less money, especially with the cloud providers. So there's something that enforces it and that can help. So for a business, it might be a bit easier to say, okay, we're not putting the feature live this week. We will do some optimizations and go live, say, a week later. I don't know, the timescales are a little bit arbitrary in the example. But to say, we need a bit more time to optimize the solution, which is bad because it takes longer to get out. But on the positive side, you can not only say you're doing something good for the environment by reducing the carbon emissions, but you will also save money because we've optimized the solution. So it needs, say, 10% fewer servers. So you are, you're investing a bit more, you're losing a bit of time to market, but at the same time, you're reducing the operational cost and at the same time, you're doing something good. So there's this balance in a way that can, but doesn't always have to work in the favor of writing greener software. And uh, in this, uh, I think I already, we already mentioned it in one of the questions in the in the session we did uh, with your with your webinar last last uh, two last last week, I think. Um, how do you envision artificial intelligence in shaping the landscape of uh, all of that? Well, that's um, that's a really good question. Let's start with the positive side. So, I mean, artificial intelligence is really good in finding patterns, in understanding understanding connections between different values. And what we've seen is that machine learning models can help to optimize the use of resources, but also maybe understand, not optimize the usage of the resources, but understand how they are used in the first place. And to give you an example, and I, I spoke about it in the webinar, we try to estimate or measure, but most of the time estimate, how much carbon emissions will result from a certain business functionality we're programming. And there are tools that can now use models that were created with machine learning. And these models are then more accurate in predicting that or in, in estimating that, which is a good thing. The big elephant in the room is, of course, that machine learning most of the time revolves around models. And these models are trained. So you take a huge amount of data that you got from somewhere and you stick it into a learning process that is well understood and out comes a model that you can then later use to make predictions or answer questions or chat tool like the large language models behind chat gpt and that training phase of course uses a huge amount of electricity and then of course as we know in general huge amounts of electricity correlate with carbon emissions so in that case as we're using more and more solutions that are built on ai there's an increased there's potentially an increased need to train these machine learning models, which will add a lot of new processing power. There is something that keeps this in check to a certain extent because these processing costs money. So companies will be incentivized to use less of that. And what we've also seen in the, as little over a year now, but in largely in the year since the release of ChatGPT is that not everybody is out there rushing out there to build the models and retrain large language models themselves. 
but we found software architectures which treat the existing large language models as foundational models and are using software on top, which means that hopefully we are not seeing thousands of companies spending millions of compute hours to train machine learning models, but that we can reuse the existing models. So it is a big, yeah, it's a big new area where compute power is used, but I think a couple of factors conspire to, to keep it at least somewhat in check. Right, and uh, what we will end up with the with the final question uh, that will be addressed to the organizations: How do you think the green software movement can adapt and innovate to remain effective and impactful for organizations? That's a good question. Good question. It, yeah, as I said, I mean, the, in the end, it really depends on the organizational goals. I mean, there's some legislation that will require depending on the geography here in Europe, for example, will require our organizations to make certain improvements or at least document their carbon emissions. But then, as I said, there's this big overlap with GNOPS and the idea that you become more environmentally friendly, that you reduce your carbon emissions, and at the same time, you're saving some money. So I think that is still, for me, the key thing that will result in organizations to pursue this. We have, at ThoughtWorks, we've spoken to I think it is fair to say over 50 organizations, some of them large. I can't name them, unfortunately, as is so often with consulting. But really, I mean, you would know many of them and we've spoken to them. And it is, it's a really difficult conversation to have to say, invest in this when there isn't another financial incentive. I mean, even organizations who would, where you would think they could put something on the website appealing to the audience in the B2C space, right? I mean, where you could say, Look, I mean, as a consumer, when you're using this website, there's a little section at the bottom left of a lot of where you read more, where, that, where you make a pledge and say, this website uses or is responsible for fewer carbon emissions because we ran this initiative. This is not where the market is at the moment. I think we're seeing this a lot with food and so on, where the consumers are increasingly demanding better production. But I think when it comes to IT, we are, I would say, at least a few years away from a state where the consumers are saying, my personal choice is going to an e-commerce website will to even a small extent be influenced by how green the data center behind it, we're, we're really not there yet. Eric, thank you very much for coming. Uh, thank you very much for this interview. And it's been very insightful. Great. Thank you, Yvonne. Thank you so much. Thank you, Eric. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.